If you're an old school 80s synth or sequencer person, then you probably know what an arpeggiator is. But if you don't, then you're in for a treat because in this GarageBand Quick Jam, I'm gonna show you how to use the arpeggiator here in GarageBand on the iPhone or the iPad. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, this is Studio Live Today, and if it's your first time here, this is where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And in this particular series, GarageBand Quick Jams, in just a few minutes, I show you all about a very cool feature that we have right here in GarageBand iOS. And in this case, we're looking at the arpeggiator to create those cool arpeggio sounds. So let's dive in to GarageBand here on my iPhone right now and take a look. Here we are in GarageBand on my iPhone. Now this is a quick jam, so it's gonna be a crash course in how to use the arpeggiator. Now we can use the arpeggiator with any keyboard sound except some of our Alchemy synth sounds that have the arpeggiator already on them. So let's tap on more sounds here, and I won't use my classical grand. We need some synth to really give our arpeggiator a test here. Let's use the Helix sound. So we'll jump into Helix here. Now the arpeggiator is already on. We're gonna turn it off because we don't want that. Let's hear what the sound sounds like to begin with. Very cool, classic 80s synth. So if you wanna use an arpeggiator, we tap on the arpeggiator button, which is up here in the top right between our chord strips and our scale. We'll tap on that one there. And then to turn on the arpeggiator, we tap on run. And now we've got a few options here. We have our note order. So our note order can be either up, down, up and down, random, or as played. We'll leave that on up for now. We'll tap arpeggiator to go back. Our note rate can be anything from a quarter note up to a 30 second note, and it can be dotted or a triplet as well. We'll leave that on the default here, which is a 16th note, and go back to our arpeggiator. And then finally, our octave range can be one, two, three, or four octaves. We'll leave that on our two octave range to start with. We'll hit done, and now let's just tap on C3. We're gonna tap and hold and see what our arpeggiator actually does. So all it's doing is an octave between C3 and C4. And it's just going back and forth because it's going up at the moment. So it's going do dit do dit do dit do dit. So if we tap on arpeggiator here again, we can change all of that by changing all of our arpeggiator settings, which we'll jump into and give you a quick look at right now. Okay, let's go back to our arpeggiator here. Now let's play around with our note order. So we've shown you what up does. Let's turn this to down and hit done. Now for these ones, I'm gonna actually hit four notes at the same time just so that you can hear the difference. So if I tap a C chord here, you're gonna hear this. So you can hear it starts at the top and it goes down all the way through two octaves using that. We'll tap it again. Now let's change this up to up and down. Hit done, let's do our same C chord. So now it goes all the way up and then all the way down across those two octaves. Let's tap it again and we'll go random. And now, not surprisingly, we get a random pattern. And finally, if we tap on this one and we go note order, we can go as played. So now it's gonna be the order in which we tap them. So I'm gonna very carefully do a C chord from the bottom to the top and see if we can get this in the right order. That was clearly not a C chord, but I'm gonna leave it in because it was a bit funny. That was some other chord. But yes, you can hear that whatever note order I tap them in is the order the arpeggio will be. Okay, let's jump back in and take a look at our note right now. So at the moment, we're on a quarter note, which sounds like this. But we can change that. Let's tap it again and make it an eighth note, and we're gonna sound like this. And once again, we're back at our two octave up sound. So we'll tap it again, we'll go to the 16th note, we'll tap again and hold. And finally, we can make it a 30 second note. And look, we can do a dotted version or a triplet version as well, but uh, you can play around with those ones. Let's just go 30 second note. And when you get up to 30 second note, if you start playing chords, you can get some pretty cool sounds. Loving it. And finally, let's jump in and take a look at our octave. So our octave range, we can make it one octave, which is pretty boring if you play one note but works well if you play a few more notes. 
or we can go anywhere up through two, three, or even four octaves. Let's bump it up to four octaves, play a chord, and see what we got here. Very cool. Now, when you're recording an arpeggio using the arpeggiator, a good idea is to actually hold down your notes just before the recording starts to make sure that the first beat hits right on the first beat. I'll show you what I mean here. I'm gonna hit record, I'll hold down the notes, and you'll see what I mean. And there you go, you can hear that the first note hits right on that first beat, whereas if I hit them at the same time, it might be slightly out of sync. And the other option we have when using the arpeggiator is the latch option. So if we just tap and hold on a key at the moment, as soon as we release it, the arpeggiator stops. If we turn on the latch key and we tap a button without holding, Until we slide off that latch, the arpeggiator continues. So if you want to be able to play your arpeggiator without holding down the notes, you turn on the latch, and then if you just tap the notes, it will continue playing until you turn that latch back off. And one final tip here, and that is to be aware of both your time signature, whether you're in 4-4, 3-4, or 6-8 time, and also, as soon as you start getting into a note rate that's higher or a large octave range, you're gonna start getting out of sync with your time signature. I'll show you what I mean here. I'll hit record, hold down three notes, and you'll see how quickly I can get out of sync here. So you can see there, you're gonna to have to use a little bit of mathematics or a little bit of trial and error to work out which type of arpeggio is gonna work with which particular time signature here in GarageBand. And there you go, how cool is the arpeggiator here in GarageBand? If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down below. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna keep up with all of the other tutorial videos and my Quick Jam series here, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you would like to check out more GarageBand Quick Jams, we have two listed right down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.